Hello, this is a 1v1 game between Hippie playing as the 7th Panzer East German and twitch.tv slash phoenixtv uh, playing as the West German 5th Panzer Division. So this was a planned game on the map Two Lakes. Uh, we arranged this game. I've been asking to play a 7th against people for some time uh, so I that I can show off the division because not a lot of people play 7th, nobody really understands how 7th is supposed to be played, and I hope to shine some light on the situation. So we'll go into the deck reviews, but first I need to do a bit of housekeeping. If you want your games casted by me, uh, a pro player, an SDL Division 1 finalist, then please send your replays to the Discord link shown on the screen now. But remember kids, I'm actually Kermit the Frog, so be sure to buy my new book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos. Okay, so this is the deck review for 7th Panzer, played by Hippie, myself. Uh, this is the second time I'm recording this, because the first time it took about half an hour because I started getting into doctrine and how you should play 7th, etc. So I'm going to try to do less of that. Right, let's go through it tab by tab. First tab, CVs. This is the best CV in my opinion because it's wheeled, unlike these two, and I don't want to pay 15 extra points for a gun because if it starts shooting, the enemy knows where my CV is and then my CV is going to explode. And for some reason, the BTR 60 with the gun is also slower off road. Not sure why, so that's why I take two of these. Uh, these have a little bit more armor, but uh, they're tracked, so they're slow. Um, you know, I, I don't see why anybody would buy this. For supply, you've got two options here. You have the, uh, the MTLB munition, which is 500 supply per unit, 10 units, 5,000 supply per cart, and it's 20 points per 500 supply. The advantage of this is because you get 10 and they're cheap and they're, they're armoured, so you can just sort of stick them everywhere and, you know, if they die, not a big deal. They'll resist a little bit of artillery, not much. Um, and so that's what they're good for. And then when they run out of ammunition, you can you can use them in your pushes um, just to sponge. I mean, it's, it's only going to take one hit, really, from most things. Uh, but it, it's there, you know. The advantage of the truck is that it carries 2,000 supply per truck, and there are three trucks, so 6,000 supply total, which is higher. It also has faster road speed because it's wheeled. Um, and it also has faster off-road speeds because it's wheeled. That's just how Eugen games work. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. Um, so more supply per card and more supply per vehicle and faster. The disadvantage is... Um, I, I think it's also cheaper for supply, right? So if you wanted 2,000 supply after out of this, you have to buy four, so that's 80 points, whereas this is... 65 points for 2,000 supply. The disadvantage is it's got max 5 damage and it's got less than 1 armor, so like 1 hoe it's around will blow it up. Um, or, you know, 1 and a bit. So it dies easy, and if you lose it, you're going to be very sad. So it's good to bring one of each. Infantry tab. Um, Panzer Jaeger in the SPW-70. So... Anything I can bring in the SPW-70 I do, so let's talk about the transport. It's a BTR-60, but East German. At least I think it's a BTR-60. KPVT, very good. Two front armour, good. That means it can survive a front shot from a M72 law and survive. It's quite funny. It's got the fastest road speed, it's got fast off-road speed, it's good. It's a good transport, I like it. Panzerjäger. Panzerjäger are... For killing tanks and stuff in forests um, and they're very good at that you can also use them for sniping and flanking and stuff um, but 500 meters makes that a lot harder but the fact that they bring 12 rocket launchers with them you just switch one off 20 penetration pretty good accuracy um, and they're very very good for harassing and also for having in your little infantry blobs you should have one panzer jaeger at the, near the back um, just to blow up any tanks that show up, or any IFVs. Pioneer Flam, SBW-70 again. So, you've got two choices in Pioneer. Some people bring both. You have the Satchel Pioneer and the Flamethrower Pioneer. 
I prefer the Flamethrower Pioneer because he makes the enemy move, which lowers their DPS. The disadvantage is that Satchel's now fire on the move in this patch. It seems to change a lot, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, so the Satchels will still be able to throw. Also, you will lose to a, f a Flash or an RPO, uh, a Napalm Launching thingy. So this is a flamethrower as opposed to a napalm launcher. So you'll lose to those. Um, but they are good, and uh, unless you're in a building. If you're in a building, because you need to be stationary to shoot your flamethrower, right? So that's why you lose to the RPO, because it makes you move when you get hit. Um, if you manage to stay still for four seconds, you're going you're gonna to kill the infantry in front of you. I bring one card of Mochutsun in the BMP. Um, so Mochutsun, very good infantry because they have two 762 M LMGs. These are the best LMG in the game right now. Any 762 sort of assault rifle looking LMG is the best in the game right now. That might change, I don't know. Um, decent rocket launcher. Yeah, they're good at killing. Then your choice of troop transport. You have a choice between the BMP-1P with the faggot and for the same price, you can get the Malyuka. So pay attention to this, right? So the, everything is the same except the ATGM. On the ATGM, everything is the same except the accuracy and the range. So the accuracy of the Malyuka is 46% with the veterancy. The accuracy of the Faggot is 57% with the, with the veterancy bonus. But the closer you are to targets, the higher your accuracy gets, right? Uh, so I did the calculation, one second. This is the calculation. Um, don't worry about all this. What you want to look at is the graph here on the right. In the blue line, you have the accuracy of the faggot. And in the orange line, you have the accuracy of the Mariuka. So you can see that the faggot is better than the Mariuka at all accuracies up to about 400 meters. Um, the difference in accuracy goes down with increased distance to the target. Um, yeah, so you should always bring vehicles with faggots on the top right now, unless they change this. If I was forced to pay five points more for the faggot, I wouldn't do it. S, uh, SPW-70 with the Conkers, so yeah, I bring the SPW-70 where I can. I think it's better than the BMP-1P with the Faggot. Um, Conkers, good for denying area to the enemy and sort of pushing back enemy heavy tanks. You're not going to kill them unless they make a mistake, uh, but you'll push them back. You'll deny them the area. They have to bring up artillery to kill the ATGM team, especially if it's in a building, and that gives you time. Time is what you need against enemy heavy tanks. I then bring Mochutsun BTR in the SPW-70, because the SPW-70 is a BTR. You can only bring one card of these, otherwise I'd, I'd just bring two. Um, they're exactly the same, except they cost five points more, and they have one more man. And their choice of transports is different. Bring one card of leaders, taking my total CV count up to nine. I bring it in the fastest possible vehicle. I don't have access to an SPW-70, so I bring it in the truck. You've got two choices of leader. You can pay five points more for a better RPG. Um, it's entirely up to you. I then bring these SPG-9 trucks, which are really good. Taken, taken the meta by storm. Everybody's using these. Um... They're really good for a variety of reasons. You want these around the back, around the side, supporting the push. They can't take a punch, but they're, they're very good at killing people and they've got good stealth. Which means that uh, unless your enemy brings recon with you, sometimes you shoot from a tree line and they don't actually see you. And then you just drive away. Artillery, right now, MLRS isn't very good. Uh, hopefully it changes one day. So instead I bring the Acacias you got the choice between the Acacia and the Light Howitzer. The Light Howitzer now shoots... It aims faster than the Acacia, but I want that uh, that burst damage. Whether or not my enemy has 16 seconds of aim time or 26 seconds of aim time, 
uh, if he doesn't see my artillery, he doesn't know it's aiming, and so it doesn't matter. The shells take the same amount of time in flight. I hope that makes sense. Then bring the mortars for smoke and for harassment. I bring them in the L MTLB because if you get counter batteries, you can put them in the MTLB and you'll survive quite often. Whereas if you put them in the UAZ, the UAZ blows up in one hit um, to the uh, enemy counter barrage. So sometimes if you get in counter batteries and you can see it coming, you can put them in the MTLB and survive. The disadvantage is that means they're slower off the bat in your opener. They're not going to get there as fast because of the lower road speed, but that's okay. Tank tab, bring all of the T-72s. The, what's the difference? Let's be speedy about this. The 160 pointer has 15 front armor and max range gun. Everything is the same with the 135 pointer except two front armor. But when you go from the 135 pointer to the 100 pointer, you lose armor, but you also lose range on the gun. And because of the way kinetic projectiles work, they get better the closer you are which means that at every single distance, the T-72M will have one more penetration than the T-72. Having said that, the T base T-72 for 100 points can survive a front shot from a TOW-2 missile most of the time. The issue is some of the time, because it gets it down to 1 HP, it routes, and when it routes, it's exposed with 1 HP, you can't pop smoke, you're dead. You just die most of the time. So, the 135 pointer is the one you want to be bringing the most of, and that's why it's not at max veterancy, because then I would lose six of them. So, 160 pointer good, 135 pointer is the one you want to spam, 100 pointer is when you run out of 135 pointers. Then you've got the T55 line, the 95 pointer has a max range ATGM, so that's why you bring it. You bring it for standoff against enemy heavy tanks. I know it sounds counterproductive, surely you'd want the more expensive one against the heavy tanks. You want this so you can keep them at range, otherwise they're forced to smoke and go around and go backwards and forwards and poke and stuff. You can keep them at 2800 meters with this vehicle. The 85 pointer's in a bit of a weird place. Um, so this is more of an infantry fire support than a than a, a anti-tank role because of the NSVT and the PKT. But the 55 pointer, the T55A, also does the same thing. So I only bring the 85 pointer when I've run out of 55 pointers and 95 pointers. In the same way that I'm only bringing the 100 pointer when I either I run out of 135 pointers or I I have 300 points and I really want the three of these. <laughs> Recon, um, recon helicopter, bring the recon helicopter, always bring the recon helicopter, always bring the recon helicopter, Alf Clara, Alf Clara, Alf Clara, with the cool vehicle, the cool vehicle, um, is really funny in recon fights because your four-man dinky squad will actually win if you're... UAZ KPVT can actually shoot at the enemy recon squad. Uh, it also has its own recon and good stealth, so you can drop these guys off and then move this somewhere else and get more eyes on the battlefield. You've then got your combat recon. So in front of your tanks, you need recon. Otherwise, you're not going to see the enemy until he's close enough to smack you. So these are the guys you bring, and you bring them for the opener as well. They're seven strength, so the, the advantage of them over these guys is that they survive three extra shots from a tank. That That is the advantage. That's why you bring them. Uh, why do I bring these guys instead of the Special of Clara? Special of Clara have two more strength, which is fantastic, but you're paying 15 extra points for it, and you only get four. I always bring six of these guys, so that's why I need them. A, A... Uh, Shilka and Kup. This is the mainstay of your forces. I bring this on max vet because um, I don't need six. And it makes the... Because this thing shoots really, really fast, uh, a small increase, a percentage increase in fire rate to, for example, plus 33%, so plus 25%. So gaining eight extra percent actually leads to a lot more shots downrange. Um... And because it shoots so much, you feel this accuracy difference immediately. It's sort of like if you roll a dice once, you might get a six and you might get a one. 
Um, but if you roll a dice 10,000 times, you're going to get all of them equally. Hopefully. Might be a weighted dice. Anyway, uh, the cub does 9 damage when it hits something. The shilka will do about 1 damage. And so you're hoping that this gets 1 hit. And this gets 1 hit out of the many, many hits. So it's going to get 1 hit, mate. Don't worry about it. And then you'll kill the enemy plane, which has 10 HP. Unless it's an armoured plane. Strellas. So one thing you could do is upvert these, actually. Uh, for the fire rate, not for the... 4% accuracy bonus. Um, exceptional stealth. This is important. So, as you probably noticed, helicopter range 2475. Helicopter range 2475. Bad stealth. Bad stealth. Helicopter range 2650. Bad stealth. 2650. Bad stealth. Right. So, what happens when the enemy brings a 2800 meter ATGM helicopter to come and kill your T72s? That's where these guys come in, because even though their range is low, because of the exceptional stealth, they can actually be quite far in front of your tanks, which is where you want them, and the enemy won't see them until they shoot. Um, and that is how you deal with the enemy helicopters, which he will bring to kill your armoured pushes. Helicopters. This one's 170 points, and you, uh, you get one of them. This one's 120 points, and you get two of them. These are the ones you want to bring. Don't want to bring these because they're not armoured and one gun run from a plane will kill them. You'll have no chance. You'll have no chance. You won't survive. And so what's the point? So I like to bring one of these and one of these. You could bring two of these. You could bring two of these. Do not bring these until they change them. Air tab. Right, so this is one of 7th's main advantages. The SU-22M. It's very good. Speed, ECM, good agility. The guns on it are hilariously good right now. And it also has short range missiles. So it's just really, really good. And it also has whatever it's bringing to do its actual job. So the seed plane, you get four in a card. It's pretty absurd. 240 points as well. And the missile's not bad. You don't use these to kill enemy AA. I mean, you can. Right, you can use it for all the basic seed tasks. But the reason you're bringing this is so you can suicide it against helicopters and survive. So, you know, obviously it's not a suicide. This Gatling gun will kill any helicopter pretty easily. And the 40% ECM means you might make it out. The same, but in an AT variant, 10% less ECM because it's not the seed plane. This AT missile is very, very, very good. 30 penetration kills, kills most things. And because it will follow up with the guns, and obviously another missile, if the first one misses, whatever. Um, unless the enemy smokes or you lose line of sight, you're basically going to kill the, the tank that you're aiming this at. Cluster plane for killing the tank that you can't aim at because it's hiding. These HE bombers you used to get four in a card, I believe. Um... They've lost their potency a little bit, but the fact is they're very cheap, and the bombs are good, and the resupply time is, what, two minutes? And so you use these to uh, snipe infantry. And if they're cheap and they die, it doesn't matter too much, but obviously you don't want to be suiciding them. You want to keep your air alive as much as you can. AA, this is the best AA plane that money can buy for the 7th Panzer DDR. Uh, it's not fantastic. The point of this is to supplement your... AA net. So if the A10 Warthog is barreling down towards you, you send this out, but you want to engage over your AA net. You do not want to engage over open ground or over the enemy because you'll lose. The advantage of this thing is it's quite long range, so you can shoot this one missile, and while it's in the air, you can tell the plane to evac or just, you know, right click on the back of your map, your side of the map. And the missile will keep going, and then you can do another turn and shoot another one. And then you can evac. Okay, so this is Phoenix's deck playing 5th Panzer West Germany. We'll go into it tab by tab. First tab, he brings two cards of uh, Unimog Supply. So these are Wheeled Supply, 20 points, 500 Supply. Um, they are good. They're probably one of the best Supply cards in the game, because it's, it's Wheeled and it's 20 points and it's 500 Supply as opposed to the tracked one, because obviously this is a bit slower. 
Um, you can get this for 5,000 supply in a card total, 2,500 in a, in a truck. If you lose this, you're going to be very, very, very sad. The advantage is you save, what, 40 points in the card. 160 versus 200. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's worth it. Then, for the CVs, uh, you can bring the car. The car dies in one heavy hoits around. Um, but you get four availability. And you can bring this, which is slower, but it will survive uh, two or more hoits around slower. Uh, I like this one. Not for the MG, but for the speed and the armor. It'll survive two hoits around. So, well, mm, one in a bit. Personal preference. Infantry tab. So this is a medium MG in an Iltis. It's good for um, defending. That's what it's there for. It's defensive. You put it in a building and it lives a long time. And you get 12 of them, so you can put them absolutely everywhere. In terms of transport choice, you can sell the Iltis. Uh, Fux Milan's quite a good one to spam. Um, but yeah, Iltis. Pioneer No Flamethrower in the Fux Milan. So these are good pioneers for the for the price. They're ten strength and they get the satchels. Uh, Fox Milan is good. So for five points more, you get a Milan. So I would always take the Fox Milan over the normal Fox. Fox Milan Pioneer Arm Burst. So Pioneer Arm. So the the Arm Burst is a throwable rocket launcher. So it has twenty rate of fire. The penetration is really not great. I don't like it at all. Don't really think it's worth it. The choices between the Jaeger and the Pioneer Armburst. So the Jaeger get one more guy for the same price, but their rocket launcher is ten rounds a minute, so twenty. One more penetration. So that that's the choice you make. Also, the Armburst come in the Fox or the Fox Milan, whereas the Jaeger only come in the car. Panzer Grenadier Marder in the Marder 1A3, so the, the 1A3 is probably the best IV in the game. Um, hmm, actually, maybe the BMP3 is. This is in a very, very good price to performance ratio. For 40 points, you get 5 front armor, which is very good. The autocannon is good. Uh, for 10 points more, you get a Milan. It's a personal choice. I don't play 5th. Um, I, I actually bring the 1A3 normal when I do play 5th because I. Five points from Milan is good, but ten. Um, once you're in this price point, you know you're basically up against like a T fifty five A or something in terms of price. So I think this is in a really good spot. Or you can pay five points more for a Milan and one less front armor, but really it's the armor. The armor's very good. Panzer Grenadier Carl Gustav. So these are good for your um, killing of vehicles at close range because the German rocket launchers aren't very good, as we saw in the previous units. Marder 1A3 again. Another card of these. And then Pioneer Flam in the normal Fux instead of the Fux Milan. So I disagree with this, I'd bring it in the Fux Milan. Five points more for a Milan. But yeah, these are a lot like the, the uh, Pioneer Flam from the other team, except they have SMGs. Um, which can be useful because if you have an MG and you use attack move, they'll start attack moving outside of the range of your flamethrower, so you have to micro them a bit more. Whereas because these SMGs are a bit lower range, you'll definitely get the flamethrower off. But then you might not get your 10 Uzis off, so you know, swings and roundabouts. M40A1, don't really rate this. Um, so this is good if you stick it in a building and it can shoot people and it can shoot tanks. So you've got you've got three sort of defensive things that you could stick in a building that kill people. You you've got your Milans, which kill vehicles. You've got your MG3s, which kill people, and then you've got the M40, which kills both, but isn't as specialized. So I prefer this to this, but I wouldn't bring both. I would bring this and this. Or, or this, probably this one actually. Uh, but yeah, it's personal preference. I mean, there's a lot of infantry slots available here, and you, these get used a lot in the game. They're not as good as the SPG-9 that the 
uh, Soviets and friends get. The pen is better, but the accuracy and the rate the rate of fire is really what's letting you down. Artillery, this is really, really, really good on two lakes, which is what we're playing, because it just deletes houses, and you can just sort of delete a house, delete the next house, delete the next house, and that's how you make things happen. Then, um, mortars, so... This is 120 millimeter mortar for 90 points, whereas you can get it for 45 if you get rid of the truck. But really, this is 65 and it'll die to counter battery, so really it makes sense to bring this because it will survive counter battery most of the time and you can move it around faster. Uh, unless you're, you're very try hard, in which case you will find cost savings by bringing this one. Tanks, so this is where 5th Panzer excels, obviously. Uh, tank division. So. Let's just go left to right. This thing is an infantry supporting vehicle. Uh, I don't like it. Um, so it, it's good. It, it is good for it. It's 55 points. It shoots people at 10 rounds a minute. The uh, the 50 cal is very good. The M240 is not so great, but the 50 cal is good. Five armor. And then you think, oh, wait a minute, five armor? Where have I seen that before? So. Uh, here it is. So, yeah, for 15 points less, or 5 points less, you can get the same armor, obviously a bit better on top and rear armor, um, and an auto cannon and an ATGM. So this will, the Marder will kill infantry a lot better than the M48A2. So it depends what you want it for. You might say, well, you know, I can also challenge tanks. You cannot challenge tanks. Next, Leopard 1A, 1A, 1A1. 80 point, medium. It's good medium, you get a lot of them. Um, basically, the way the Leopards work over the T-72s, T-55s, etc. is that for the same price, they tend to have a better gun but less armor. That, that's a good way to think about them. So they're, they're supposed to be about the gun and not the armor, whereas the Soviet ones tend to be about the armor. Um, so the Leopard 1A5 is better, obviously, but it's 20 points more. The, the gun is better, but the armor, right, you've got the same armor problem, but the gun on the Leopard 1A5 is very, very good. So I like to spam the 1A5, but you only get one card, and then you switch to these. I don't know if anybody's really going to bring 12 1A, 1A1s. I mean, if you start up betting this, you lose 4, but you get a bit of, bit of accuracy, a bit of rate of fire. It's up to you whether you think this is worth it. I know some people, myself included, bring this on max vet, so I get that juicy 13 rate of fire. Anyway, Leopard 2A3. This is the mainstay of your army. Um... Perfect stabilizer, so you can move it around, shoot things. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a really, really good tank. There's, there's no way about it. And the way Phoenix has this set up, because you get three cards, is that he's brought two on max vet for that extremely good shoot. Hits three quarters of the time at max range. And 13 rate of fire. And then if he runs out of these, then at least he's got four on the slightly lower veterancy. The Leopard 2A4 is also in the game, and it is better. Um, subject to the law of diminishing returns, though, I mean, it's, it's 45 extra points. You get less in a card. Um, one more front armor. The gun's better a little bit, but, you know, so... So this obviously has 13 rate of fire, but this on the base has 9. And so... If you wanted to vet this, you'd only get one. So that's where the trade-offs start, right? So it's kind of difficult to justify this, especially considering that as soon as your enemy sees it, a jet is going to come the other way and just slam itself into it and kill you. Uh, and it will be worth it for the enemy player, because this costs so much. Jaguar 2 with the Tow 2. Uh, this is just a Tow 2 vehicle. It's good. Um, this is probably why... Phoenix didn't bring any ATGMs in here, uh, at least units, because he's got the Fuchs Milan 
and he's got the the Mar de Milan, unless I change that. Was that supposed to be like that? One with the Milan, one without? I can't remember. Um, so that's why he brings the Toto. The Toto is deadly against T72s. You will survive one front shot, which is good. Um, but sometimes it routes you, and if you're missing one HP, you will not survive one front shot with a normal T72. Three front armor means it can actually tank a hit, and it's got smoke launchers. Then he brings a tank CV. Which is good, sometimes you need tank CV. And that takes him up to uh, 9 CVs total. Jaeger, Aufklärer. So these guys are the best combat recon in the game because of their strength. Uh, in terms of killing people, they're a better combat recon for killing people, but that's not why you want these guys. You want these guys to be in the field, providing recon at the front of your push, and because they have 11 strength, they're going to be able to do that for a long time before you pull them back and save them. You don't want them to die, obviously, but sometimes they will. The fact that they have 11 strength means that they don't go down so easy. So that's why you want them, because of this optic stealth. You have them at the front, they live for a long time, they're good in the openers because they live for so long, etc. Then you've got the um, standard Alclera. So these guys are four-man squad, but they, the TP Fux does not hold a candle to the KPVT vehicle, but it has one armor. Um... So yeah, these are all, these are flight flank recon basically. The Lux A one is really really good for openers because um, you just drive it around, you drive it around the side, you kill things. If you get close enough, you can kill tanks because it's a kinetic projectile, which means the closer you get, the more penetration it does. So if you get close enough and you shoot something in the back, you can actually kill anything, uh, anything on the ground, and helicopters. But yeah, they're made for harassment and uh, combat. Recon and uh, just basically being a pain in the ass. Recon helicopter. Always bring a recon helicopter. Always bring a recon helicopter. Air tab. So I disagree with this one because uh, there's been some changes. So Gepard is extremely good. Does it get smoke? I think it does, you know. Yeah. Um... It's, it's very good. It's probably one of the best bags in the game. For its price, I think it's the best bag in the game. Three front armor means it might survive a shot. And it has smoke, so it will survive the shot, and then it smokes and, and lives. And, you know, it's got good stabilizer. It's good against helicopters. It's good against aircraft. It's sort of good against the ground units. You don't really want to be doing that, though. Flieger Faust. Uh, these guys are kind of like the uh, Strellas in that they're not amazing, but you bring them... I mean, I've already explained why you should bring these, uh, the same reason you bring the Strellas. In terms of whether or not you need 16, probably not. You probably want more than 5, though. That's a very strange veterancy curve. Maybe you want 11? And then, yeah, they, they have better accuracy than, uh, than the Strella. They cost 5 points more. Roland 2 versus Roland 3, so they change these a lot. Basically, the Roland 3 is radar now, and it didn't... They used to both be radar, but now only the Roland 3 is radar. And the Roland 3 has higher range against aircraft, higher accuracy, and one more damage. I prefer the Roland 3. The advantage of the Roland 2 is that uh, it's not radar but you need to maintain line of sight the whole time, otherwise you lose your missile. I should add, this is also fire and forget. Anyway, helicopters. So this is where 5th has been changed a little bit. They now get Apaches, and the Apache is extremely good, and that's catapulted 5th from mediocre to very good in a lot of people's eyes. Um... Yeah, Apaches, they kill stuff fast. If you just fly one of these over a CV, it just kills it in, in like, one frame. It's um, really difficult to deal with. They cost 150 points now, though. You can get four of them, so he brings all four. The disadvantage is that you don't get an ATGM launch from a helicopter. So this is can be this can be really, really useful. 2625 meters range, 24 pen. This is good against armored tank pushes in open ground in a way that this isn't, because it doesn't have the ATGMs. Um, so missing out on these is, is uh, it's a big problem.
Right, air tab. I don't really agree with this air tab. So fifth has very weak uh, ASFs, air fighters. These aren't amazing at all. But they're better than nothing. So a lot of people bring them. Some people bring this, actually. Anyway, um, so you, you sort of have to bring them in case your enemy overextends and then you can kill him. Um, but they're really not very good. Some people just, just, just don't bring them. The Alpha Jet, you use this to kill helicopters uh, and tanks <laughs> because of the gun. The gun's pretty crazy and the rockets help a little bit. It's mainly for the gun. Uh, this will just shred any plane that gets close to it as well, even though it's this stinky little trainer jet. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a weird one. But yeah, this is that's what that's for. It's like a poor man's SU-25. Then you've got some choices for bombers here. So basically the AT plane that 5th gets is kind of crap because the accuracy on this is really bad. And because a reload time is 2.5 seconds, you only get one off. Or maybe two. Yeah, you get two off, but you have to fl complete your entire path over the tank. At which point then you fly over the tank and you get hit by the enemy AA a lot and you die. And it's only got 40% accuracy. I have a few videos of these just missing constantly back to back. So the, the cure, as it were, is cluster plane. 30% ECM, high speed, and also the F4 FHE plane, which has 30% ECM uh, lower speed. So the F4 FHE2 will kill a tank with because there's so many bombs. Uh, it'll kill a tank. But, you know, I'd, I'd probably just wouldn't, wouldn't bring this. I'd probably bring the cluster jet. Um... I don't play fifth, I don't know what I'm talking about. Right, so let's get into the deployments. I will do blue team's deployment first. So left to right, two ways. Most people consider this to be the better side. Uh, I mean, I think the jury's, you know, the, the, the data's in, everybody knows this is the better side, but it's not that much better. The reason why it's the better side is because you can put your recon units here and just charge in to the town really fast at the start, particularly if you're a forward deployment div or an infantry div. Phoenix is neither. He is an armored division. So he's going to struggle to do an early attack into here. So what I think his plan is, is to do what most armored divisions do, which is stabilize at the start and defend while building up a critical mass of heavy tanks, which you then use to kill your opponent in the mid to late game. So looking at the deployment, he's deployed uh, some Farman Alclerers here. Two more recon here, deploying quite conservatively. Recon helicopter to stop flanks. I don't know why. I mean, I, I don't really flank, so a bit of a waste of time. Um, CV for Delta and a CV for the middle. That's what you want to do. You want to get two CVs at a time If on this map. If you plan to drag it out to the late game, you want to buy two CVs at the start so that you're not constantly on the back foot because you know I've got to take, I've got to take some points or I'm going to lose. So that's why he's opened double CV, and you'll see later that I did the same. So going over to the left, we have quite a dispersed deployment here. So Roland 2, um, why is it doing that? Roland 2, a couple of these cheap hundred, uh, these cheap 55 point tanks, which I don't really rate, and a uh, Fliegerfaust. Fliegerfaust is going to the left to stop flanks. Um, okay, I mean, I don't flank, so I don't see why he would do that. Moving over to his deployment for the right side of the map. We've got some Alclera deploying here. So this, this is always a zone of contention at the start of the game. So I would deploy the 11 man squad here because you know you're going to get into a fight. This area is always fought over near the start of the game. Four man squad going here. Um, two more recon. So these are taking very interesting approaches, so he's going to deploy his people and then send the vehicles forwards to scout. So the Fuchs only has an MG3, 
so if it comes up against anything with one armor or greater, including itself, it can't actually shoot because this doesn't have any armor penetration capability. Um, so that doesn't make sense to me because it's got bad optics as well, but I guess, you know, you might as well do something with it, otherwise it's a waste. Personally, I would have just brought these in the trucks. His main axis here is going to Delta, Bravo, whoops, to defend. CV, we spoke about. Pioneers in the Fux Milan, and then a lot of these defensive stationary units, the M40, the MG3, I mean, that's what they're there for. They're there to defend, and one roll and two. So... He's got he's got two Roland twos on the map, but a Roland two. Uh, if a jet comes in here, it's only going to face one Roland two, and if a jet comes in here, it's only going to face one Roland two, and there's nothing else backing these up. So the jet will survive in either case, unless unless the enemy drags it across both zones. Like uh, um, anyway, so. It's better to have two Roland twos in one place than two Roland twos in two places because you might actually kill whatever it is that's coming your way. Right, so my deployment will go left to right again. Uh, what is my plan? My plan is to start pressure in the early game and constantly keep an ever greater force of T-72s growing, constantly applying pressure until I eventually win. That is the plan for 7th, as far as I can tell. I don't see a better way to play this division. So you open quite conservatively. You don't you don't push at minute 0. You open quite conservatively. You need to protect your T-72s. They can take a hit. They can Most times they can take two hits before you need to pull them back. But you need to constantly keep as many of them alive as possible. Because of the cost of the T-72... It scales faster than other tanks because, you know, two two of these is a Leopard uh, 2A3, right? And so first it's two T-72s to one Leopard. Then it's four T-72s to two Leopards. Then it's six T-72s to three Leopards. Do you see? And if I manage to kill any of his Leopard 2A3s, then the odds just grow ever greater in my favor. So that's the plan. Open conservatively, apply pressure, set up a good AA net and defend my tanks. Apply pressure while keeping my tanks alive. That's what has to happen. So, I've deployed all six of my motorized Alvclera at the start. I've got one going up to here at the start, which is a good place for it, and then one going up to here, which a bit of a mistake. I should have put this here. It would have got there faster because now it has to go the wrong way. I make quite a few mistakes this game. The other guy is coming to here because having this as a, this part is really, really, really helpful for fighting into this town. You basically need it. Uh, right, so what else is going to the left? One CV, we spoke about this, and a UAZ SPG-9 just to help out my... Uh, just to help out my recon that's going to be here. I'm just going to keep the UAZ here. One thing I do neglect is to send anybody here, which was a big mistake for me. Really, I should have sent the UAZ up here and around here and just clean this out at the start. Over on the right, we have a recon helicopter. Uh, I just want to check what's going on over here and then check what's going on over here and then survive. So that's that's where this comes from. Three motorized out of Clara coming into the town. This is a good building. Uh, this is good building. And the reason you put this here is because the enemy will actually get to here first. And if it's a Lux, because I assumed that he would open with a bunch of Luxes, but he doesn't do that. Uh, the Lux will shoot down this road and kill your recon for free. You won't even get a shot off. So the next thing to talk about um, it are all of my other units. <laughs> I'm quite out of practice. So, Strellas, right? And Cubs, Shilkers, Motshutson. So I'm going to open conservatively and then I'm going to immediately start applying pressure. So let's just go from the front backwards. Where are all these Strellas going? So obviously the, the CV is going into the town. And the Strellas are going to these locations. So I want 
I want to take this and I want to I want to sort of fight over this area using my T72. So I've got Strala here, Strala here, and then one going into the town, uh, just in case. So that's it for the Strellas. Then we have the Cub and Shilka combo. So this is to keep your tanks alive. So I'm opening with them coming here, and then they're going to follow my tanks around. And the munitions is to supply it, uh, which you should always, if you buy a Cub, buy munitions with it. And the reason why is that this has three missiles, and it will shoot all of them at one plane and get one hit, usually. And so you're, you're immediately out of ammo. <laughs> For the next plane so you need to keep the munitions with it and for 20 points you know it's good the pioneer flam and the march are just to hold territory so you know i'm a bit worried that he's going to sneak some people around here so they're just going there and then two t72 m's these are the 135 points as we spoke about so one t72 is not gonna accomplish anything because the accuracy is bad and, you know, you're going to miss a couple of times and then the enemy's going to smoke and run away. That's why you always bring two. The, the smallest unit of tanks for 7th Armoured is two tanks. Never have one tank. That's something you've got to understand. Because if I have two of these and I'm fighting a Leopard 2A3 or, or anything, this is going to take one hit. And then it's going to take another hit and then I'm going to smoke and retreat. And while that's been happening, I fired three rounds each for a total of six rounds downrange. So that's how you do it. That's how you play it. That's how you use T-72s. You use them in numbers. You don't want them right next to each other because one cluster bomb will kill both of them. And when you open with two medium tanks, the enemy is going to send a plane at your medium tanks 100% of the time. It's just something in their head. It's just how it works. You need to empathize with your enemy, right? So smack your head repeatedly against a wall and then look at this and think it's coming the other way. It's two T-72Ms. What am I going to do? You're going to send a plane to kill one of them. And that is why is that there is always this overabundance of anti-air with these tanks. And if he kills one 135 point tank with his 200 point jet, who cares? You know, just make sure he doesn't kill both of them and you kill his, you kill his jet. So I hope that was enlightening and now we'll start the game. Right, so they're off and everybody's going where we discussed because we can see into the future. Um, this one obviously was going the wrong way, so that was that was a bit silly. The reason this is going here is because I need to get recon over this area so I can fight over it. You should always have recon in front of your troops. The way the game works right now is that if the enemy is in a building, it's really, really difficult to see it. And I'm attacking into lots of buildings. So you need the recon. He's going to start here, he's going to work his way up, and the plan is to always keep him in front of my tanks. Because he's got 7 strength, as soon as um, he starts taking fire, you know, I just pull him back and heal him. So I see these with the, the recon helicopter, which is doing this. Meanwhile, my opponent's recon helicopter is out here doing nothing. And if I came to kill this, he wouldn't be able to save it because there's no AA around it. So I would kill this and survive, and his fighters couldn't get me because 5th doesn't have good fighters. So, yeah, I got two Strellas here for this push across here. I got the Motorized Alvclair. I need to start moving this up. I left this exposed, which was a mistake. And now you see the Fux versus Alvclair fight. Um, so the MG3 isn't going to one-shot anything, right? So I just jump out and blow it up. SPG's coming. Phoenix has me here, though. I've got, I've got nothing here. Over here, I've spotted him, and so now I'm using the T-72s. I wanted to use them over here, but that's okay. I've spotted something. I'm going to go kill it. These are now going to move up, and I've got three Strellas around them. You need to get into the mindset of your opponent. Oh my god, there's two T-72s. What am I going to do? So he deploys tanks, and he's going to deploy aircraft. They always deploy aircraft. All right, sorry. I just had some very brief technical issues there. I'm a bit out of practice. I've not done one of these for a while. So 
he gets his owl clearer out. I'm moving up to kill him. And here comes the jet. Um, and I'm ready for him. I move my shulker up. I move my cub up. This fire support vehicle's killing my half clearer. I need to pull this back. And um, there you go. This even survived because this isn't really much of an anti tank plane. I try and get this guy out. He's probably not getting out, actually. So it's a bit of a mistake to push up here because that's not where my true plan lies. I want to take over here. So I'm now fighting the half clearer. I've got the strellas up. I've smoked and I've lost a HP, so I bring up the munition to get my smoke back. That's important. You always want to have the smoke. Over here, I'm winning this fight because even though he's in a building, I've got the UAZ behind me. Um, he managed to get his fucks all the way around to try and find my CV. So this was a huge oversight on my part. Um, and this out of clearer here. So this was a really, really big mistake. And I'm bringing up a bunch of base T-72s, which... I just told you not to do in the deck review, uh, but I had a lot of points stacked up and I'm bringing some more AA to protect them and now I'm making use of my tanks again. Over here I'm just trying to stabilize so I brought up some T-55s to deal with his uh, M48s. You see these are the same price but the T-55 is better. Oh the fire rate is less but you know I mean it's better against tanks. Over here, I moved the mock shots in here to put them here, but now I do not have a single AT option in this forest, which was a big mistake. Fight for this continues. I'm moving the T-72s up. I'm keeping them together in a way that they can support each other. The real Chad strategy is to have them spaced out in a way that if there's a tank here, one of them will hit the side armor. But you see that he doesn't have any recon here. These guys can't see. And so I just see him before he sees me every single time because he doesn't have any recon here. And I'm engaging as a pair. This is a good Milan position. It cuts me off. So I smoke and then I pull to the side so I can still shoot these guys without revealing to these guys. And I'm going to win this fight. I bring this up. I always have the supply behind your tanks. And I'm just 2v1-ing him every time. There were three tanks there, and I, I 2v1'd all of them. Over here, he sent his half clearer forwards and um, died. There's an Apache here to deal with this, and this is a mistake, because there's no anti-air behind it. So the seed plane comes along, and this is a free kill. He's just not going to get me. So he lands. Um, but even if that worked... This would have killed him on the ground. Over here, we're still pushing in. Two more Alpha Jets for these tanks. But I have the AA. I've bought even more now. So, that's the play. They're going to send air against your tanks. So make sure your anti-air is already there. And you see that I'm just, I'm starting to get a really big mass of T-72s now. I don't think he's killed any of them yet. Um, because you can smoke. So you see this one was damaged, I smoke. This one was damaged, I smoke. I'm trying to move the recon up because I can't see any of this. Over here, this, this was obviously a huge oversight. I didn't even know about this until I checked the replay. He's left this here, which is a, a mistake in my eyes. I would immediately send this back to here and try and get six kills. I bought an Acacia and then I didn't do anything with it, which was another mistake. Apologies for my mistake-ridden gameplay. I bought this so that I could crack this tab, because th this is very, very difficult to push into. All these defensive units here, um, even with the tanks, you know, I can't really see them. And I'm burning through my supply faster than I can bring new supply up. I need more supply, really. But yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm still chipping away. I brought a T-55A for fire support. This isn't meant to fight other tanks. It's supposed to fight things like this. Because you see that I can survive a hit. And I can fire an NSVT on the tank gun. Uh, and I get it. But I don't even see this, even though it's in the same building. 
Problem with the T-72s is that they miss a lot. So that's why you always bring them in twos. If I'd had two here, I would have killed that. This guy has made a bit of a mistake. Um, really, what I could really do with is one less tank and two more infantry here. Because then you send one of the infantry up here and you protect the T-72. Because I, I would love to go up here, right? But if there's a unit here, he's going to side shot me and I'm going to die. So I could have used two more infantry, slightly fewer tanks here. I'm bringing up more AA. I'm still not using my cats here. Over here, I can see this. I remember seeing this. Uh, I've resupplied my UAZ. Most people will attack from here into here. That's why I'm not doing it, because I expect Phoenix to think that I'm going to do that, and it looks like he thought I was going to do that, because look at all these Milans. So instead, I'm pushing this axis. To respond to this, he's finally brought up a Leopard 2A3 and two Jaguar 2s with the Hot 2. So this is two T-72Ms, and it's very good with its perfect, perfect stabilizer. Um, that was very lucky, I should be dead. With its perfect stabilizer, it can drive forwards, go back, drive forwards, go back, and um, contest my tanks. But the thing is, as long as I can micro my tanks correctly, this guy cannot one-shot any of my tanks, except maybe the T-55, don't actually know. And so I should be able to keep all my tanks alive, and uh, bully him back into his place. What I really should have bought is more of these, because of the 2800 meter range ATGM. I could have had these here when he started here, and just constantly keep him penned in so he can't use his gun. As it stands, these two tanks in the middle here are sort of dead weight. If I'd had an infantry, I could have sent it forwards, um, or even this outclaw, just sent it forwards and then when this shoots, these two kill it. This is out of ammo, should have had more supply. I brought in an anti-tank option for here. Oh! Okay, so it did move. Um, he was looking for the CV, he couldn't He couldn't see it there because the, the troop transport has bad optics, so it can't see anything. And you'll see the discrepancy... Yeah, so it does one shot T-55A. <laughs> You see the discrepancy in recon here, right? So I have recon here, recon here, recon here. I did have a recon here, he just died. Um, whereas Phoenix has one recon helicopter back here and that's it. And so that allows me to fight pretty effectively. I brought up a Conkers to keep this guy pinned. And you see, look, I'm getting my guys down to 1 HP and then I'm reversing them. This guy's on 1 HP. This guy's on 1 HP. Now this guy's going in. Typically you want all of them to be shooting at once instead of doing it one at a time. But it's very difficult to micro this many tanks. And the more successful you are, the more tanks you're going to have. That was what I was talking about with the base T-72. So he got shot once, he survived, but he routed and then he died. And so that's why you want to be bringing the T-72M as much as possible. So I almost get him, but he's going to survive because he's good at the game. And that's okay. Don't be baited into chasing this guy, okay? You just want to keep him back. This was coming to kill this, but I messed it up. I sniped the helicopter and I survived because this Gepard is way, way, way too far away and the Roland spent its missile shooting the AT plane. So he needs more AA here, basically. You see the 2800 meter range ATGM doing its job. I need more recon here. I now have three tanks on one HP. You've got to keep your tanks alive. So they all survived. Well, you know, obviously that one died from the route. But you see that I'm just pushing him in. He can't really do too much. Um, I'm trying to make plays here, but I sent a recon vehicle forwards first, which dies in one hit. I should have sent the Recon Infantry up here instead. And my tanks aren't really in position. This should be healing these. But here we are, I see him now. And he doesn't have any Recon, so he can't really see me until I start shooting. He's healing up his Leopard. This is a mistake. This guy should really be healing up before I send him forwards. I want him to survive. And here you see the disadvantage of the M40A1 over the ATGMs. 
Although at this range, I suppose an ATGM is a bit, bit useless. This one might work. This one wouldn't work. This one wouldn't work. So, yeah, you know, drive forward, shoot a bit, go back, survive. Drive forward, shoot a bit, go back, survive. Sometimes I lose units, but that's just because I'm playing badly. This guy isn't fully healed yet, and I'm just pushing him back with the conkers. Uh, I should be healing these up more aggressively. This guy should have uh, ammo behind him. These two should be pushed up to here to contest that leopard. You see, I finally developed brain cells over here, sent my recon forwards and used two T-72s to kill one other thingy. This is now shooting, and I don't know if I'm paying attention. He brings over his recon helicopter so he can see me now. And now he can't, because my map pad's gone. I've moved these up. You see, with this division, you're basically limited by your own skill. As the number of units that I have goes up, my ability to control them all effectively goes down. And so I'm, you know, I have dead weight here that I could be using. And that's one of the things that makes this division so fun. So here you see two T-72Ms engaging uh, two Marder 183 Milans and one Leopard 2A3. We force the Leopard back once again. And, but he's, he's brought up the second one, but now, you know, he really should heal this up first. And we're just slowly clearing out this town. Move a recon forwards, kill the enemy. Move a recon forwards, kill the enemy. Over and over. Conkers will do one damage to most heavy tanks in the front armor. That's just how it goes. Uh, but you see how I'm microing these tanks. They're not dying. Uh, apart from the one that died before. And you see he's still not one-shotting me. So this is going to heal up and survive. And then I send the next one forwards. This guy's out of ammo, which is a big mistake. These two aren't in the combat, which is a mistake. But you see that I'm just winning these trades through... Um, uh, that was a bit lucky, actually. This one will probably hit. But he gets routed... And then he dies because I missed the last two. And you know we're just we're just taking good trades. We're building this critical mass up. I finally woke up with my Acacias at some point and started bombing things. But you see that he's brought out the counter battery. I was a bit slow off the mark here. I should have brought these forwards a bit after shooting, which I do actually have queued up, but wasn't fast enough. And now the assault on the town begins. And you're probably thinking, well, where's the smoke? Um, there are two types of pushes. A push where you have fire superiority, and one where you don't. And because I have massive fire superiority, if I obscure this, then I can't shoot it with my guys. What I should be doing is smoking off this guy, because he is constantly shooting sideways into my push. This was a mistake. Ah, so the T-72M can... Uh, also get routed, but it'll survive with 2 HP. It's a bit weird, actually. It seemed to recover immediately, though. So this was a mistake. You know, I'm not paying attention to these. I'm overloaded over here. I finally bring up a mortar for smoke, and I'm going to try smoking this guy off, because he's just killing my tanks one at a time here. But I make a mistake. I smoke here. So now, so now my tank can't shoot him. But his tanks can shoot sideways into me. So that, that was a mistake. You, you just see the, the sheer quantity of units now. This was probably a poor purchase for M40A1s. You probably want normal infantry. And we're just taking it nice and slow. I have a lot of dead weight here. These guys should all be a bit more forwards. The mortars are finally starting to obscure this guy. He's getting good kills. the grind continues and you can see that I just have this massive abundance of T-72s. I just have so many of them everywhere. I can't shift click but you can see them all right. Uh, there's a lot more units here than there are here and I'm just grinding them down into powder basically. Taking it slow but keeping up this consistent pressure. Uh, we've got supplies to heal all the tanks once they get damaged. Not enough supplies really. And we're anticipating bombers, so there's lots and lots and lots of AA. 
Cat sees a shooting the smoke now. <laughs> and I'm having some problems trying to micro all my tanks, um, given the the space. Really, I should have made like a line here, um, and then anybody that pops out dies, and I don't really need to push into the town. Another cool thing to do is send tanks over here, and then shoot his resupply. I'll send tanks over here and shoot his resupply. But he's strong here because of the left. But now we're in here and finally found an angle. And um, yeah, it's, it's going extremely well for me. Extremely well. I, there is really no way for the enemy to get back into this game. There's some units over here, but they can't. I mean, what can they do, really? So I hope you learned something about 7th Panzer. How to play 7th Panzer. I'll consider this a model game. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I made a huge number of mistakes. But hopefully you've learned something. The bomber cometh, and it dies to the 10 million AA here. Really, the Strella should be further up. And, um, yeah, that's it, basically. He is about to GG. Speed up. So yeah, good game, well played. Um, looking at the kills to losses, T-72s, I did lose a few of them, but you see how they kill the lighter tanks quite well. Um, and they shouldn't really die to anything. Unless you're not paying attention. On the other side, the Leopard, he got work out of it, he killed two T-72s and a T-55. That was in that push at the end, really. This one killed a lot more. You see the T-55s don't... The T-55A doesn't have smoke, and it only has, like, five or seven front armor, and so it will die to these. So I, I overcommitted on the T-55s. So yeah, I hope you learned something, and uh, remember to keep those T-72s alive. I will also cast another game, which will take place in a forest to give you some ideas on how to play 7th on less open maps.